What's up guys? Welcome to another one of my Tinder text game breakdowns. And this one's gonna be particularly interesting because I'm gonna show you how to get those hot ass party girls. These chicks are a little bit of a paradox because on one hand, they're usually young, hot, and DTF. On the other hand, they're notoriously flaky, difficult to make plans with. They give you these low investment one word answers. They switch up plans on you last minute. Honestly, sometimes when you're texting these chicks, it literally feels like you're talking to a wall. So I'm gonna show you how I overcame all that and more. I mean, at one point she literally told me that she only has sex for money. So you're gonna see how I got past that. And it was gonna be a very interesting one. So buckle in and enjoy. All right, so let's just crack right into the screenshots. We match on Tinder, and yes, there's still hot girls left on Tinder. You can meet them if you know what you're doing. So open her with the infamous, hey, trouble, and she responds, hey, I'm a good girl, lol. So here, you know, I'm not gonna get too logical. I'm not gonna be like, oh, but in your second pick, you look like such a bad girl, or like, stop lying to me. I'm just gonna respond with a equally cheeky answer. I say, oh, me too, with a winky face, and then she says, you're a good girl, lol, that sucks. I think you look better as a boy. So here, you know, I'm gonna kind of drop the joke and just move in a different direction. I say, thanks, but don't worry. I'm way too dominant in bed for that. So that's kind of like a reframe. Like I made like a slightly self-deprecating joke and then I'm just gonna go completely the other direction. She says, I like that. As long as I get to ride you, it's all good. So here she's sexualizing, which also is a fairly good sign. I say, of course, especially with that ass. She says, I'm 5'5 five five and little ass, lol, psh, not true. And then she says, text me. You might be thinking like, wow, this chick is so down to meet. You know, she's trying to move things over to text herself. Yes and no. Based on her profile, you know, she has, gives off a very strong party girl vibe. And if she's moving over to text that fast with me, she's doing that with pretty much every other guy. So again, me getting her number is gonna be probably nothing special at all, you know, with this type of girl. So I text her my name and she literally responds back with two question marks. So supporting my earlier theory, she just completely forgot who I was because she's giving her number out probably to a lot of people. I say from Tinder and she just responds back with hi. Very low investment message. So it's kind of with party girls, they will you know, send you very invested texts when they're in the mood, say they're rolling or something like that, or they just pop some molly. So they're gonna send you very long invested texts. And then for example, if they're like in a different mood, they're gonna send you these low investment texts. So it's kind of, you're gonna get kind of like a rainbow of um, you know, investment from them. I say the one who likes the booty and she says, well, I'm all out of luck, I'm skinny. So she's just pretending to tell from her pics that she has a fat ass. So I say, oh stop, we both know you got a nice booty. So here, I'm really just trying to get her to invest a little bit. I wanna get the conversation going because I know that if I go for the meetup right now, she'll probably agree, but then she will flake on me because there's been minimal investment so far. She says, for my body size, yes, I do, thank you. I say, that's better. Are you from here originally? So I like to also alternate between kind of like sexualization and also what I call like regular talk. I find that if you just purely sexualize, then the girl might be like, okay, yeah, she's gonna be into it into the moment. And then when it comes time to meet up, she might be like, wait, like, this guy just wants to fuck me. He doesn't care about me, eh, whatever. But if you're also just you know, doing regular talk, then she might get bored, especially this type of girl. So the right approach is to kind of alternate and basically show that you have multidimensional type of person. So I say, are you from here originally? She says, yes. <laughs> Give me like a one word answer. I say, ah, a Florida girl. And she just writes back with two emojis of someone partying. I say, so give me the basics, tattoos, kids, fun kinks. So sometimes I use this text to build investment and it can work quite well because girls will respond with you know, a paragraph. Unfortunately, she just says, busy, text you later. So this thing is kind of like, it's, the train is basically stuck in the station. So here I decide to try a different approach. I'm gonna try denying her validation, which I know can be you know, very, powerful with you know hot party girls. So I just literally like her message. And it works because literally a minute later, she double texts me and says, hey. So here I kind of play dumb and I say, hey, what's up? She says, what are you doing? Tomorrow, night. And then she sends me two videos of herself. So again, you don't want to get overly excited. When a girl's sending you pictures of videos, you don't want to be like, oh my God, you're so hot. You don't want to start sending her a bunch of videos of yourself. That's the wrong approach. What you wanna do is actually sort of deny her validation without directly insulting her. So I'm simply gonna do that by just liking her video and kind of changing the topic. Like, cool, you're cute, but I'm not impressed. That's kind of the vibe I wanna give off. So I just like her video and I say, finishing up a video, what's up? She says, going to Mr. Home, Jones. I say, who's Jones? Cause I'm just honestly not familiar with a Miami nightlife scene. She says, lol, a nightclub. 
and she sends me a screenshot and it has 2.5 stars. So I say, ah, uh, 2.5 stars, lol. So here I'm just like teasing her a little bit, like giving her some shit. She says it's lit, but I'm going home. It's boring single, lol. So this is a few hours later after she's already been there. I say, I can imagine I'll be free a bit later tomorrow night. You should come by for a drink or two. So here I'm just going for the meetup. She says, okay, I will. And then uh, she doesn't, she, she sends that text like the next day. So I kind of playfully call her out on it. I say, you thought about that one for a while. She says, sorry, busy with my son. It's his birthday. So she literally said the night before, um, you know, I'll come over and then uh, now she has plans with her son. So again, so this is the thing with party girls. They don't really think like, the way my mind works, for example, is I think, okay, I'm doing this on Tuesday, so that means I'll have time for this. I won't have time for that. So if my friend hits me up, I'll be like, oh, sorry, I'm actually busy with this, this, and this. We can hang out this time, or we can do like, I just think very logically. That's not really how party girls think. They're gonna commit to everything and anything if they're feeling it in that moment, but then in reality, when their schedule doesn't line up, they're like, whoop, well, I tried. That's kind of the attitude they have. So just a different way of viewing the world. So uh, here I say, oh, you're a MILF. She says, yes, lol. I say, my favorite. Thanks, lol. So here we're back to the low investment answers. I say, we should definitely get together sometime soon. Uh, here I'm going for the soft close again. I'm just pretending like the earlier, let's call it flake didn't happen. She says, okay, I'm down. I say, you free Thursday or Friday night. And for some reason, she just sends me a screenshot of her schedule. So she says, I'm free daytime. I work those nights. And so, my personal thing is I don't really hang out with girls during the day unless they're girls who I know really well because that's when I'm doing work. That's when I'm doing playing with fire stuff. So that's my, you know, my work time. And I'm not going to you know, really delve into that unless I'm like really fucking whatever. Really trying to bang this chick. So I say, ah, I work during the day. What time do you finish work usually? It says Sunday at least 4.30. I could go then. I don't know. It depends how busy the restaurant is. So it seems like Sunday is the best option. I say, all right, let's do Sunday evening then. Okay. So... Again, now we have another date confirmation. So I wait until Saturday. I re-engage her with the Ron Gosling meme and she literally writes back, thanks. So I try the same approach as earlier with just liking her message and it works extremely well. She just invests massively right after that. So again, with these top party girls, if you did not in validation, which very few guys are doing, it's gonna work extremely well as long as you're not coming off as rude or insulting. So she says, what are you doing tonight? Wanna to go to Komodo with me? I'm going with some friends and the at the salon now, going blonde lol, lol caramel. So she's inviting me out to hang out with her friends and a rookie mistake might be to accept her on that. Like, oh wow, she's down to hang out. But likely if she's at a club with her friends, the chances of this going ending well are not that high. You know, in reality, they're probably just gonna try to get me to pay for their drinks or fucking buy them drugs, some stupid shit like that. I value my time way too much and you should value your time also to ever even consider doing group dates. The only way you're hanging out with a girl if it's one-on-one. -on -one. You know, you're not going to the club with her and her friends. You're not fucking, you know, playing dad, whatever. You're not doing any of that shit. So I said, I have plans tonight, but I'll see you tomorrow evening. She says, can't tomorrow, sorry, oh well. So here she's just completely flaking on me, but she also seems like she doesn't give a shit. And then she says, why can't you go tonight? So what she's trying to do is she's trying to basically internally justify her flaking by making it seem like I'm the one that can never hang out. When in reality, we have plans for the following day and she just hit me up that night seeing if I could hang out on Saturday night. I said, I have plans tonight and we made plans for tomorrow. So I'm giving her a logical answer, which is probably not the best approach here, but I'm just being very matter of factly. So what kind of plants? So here I misunderstand her. I thought she was talking about what kind of plants me and her had. I didn't know she was talking about the kind of plants I had myself. I say to hang out. She says, a girl, question mark. So here she's grilling me. Honestly, I fucking hate when girls do shit like this because you know she doesn't have the right to grill me because we haven't even met yet and she's been extremely difficult to meet. So I say, is this an interrogation? Again, you don't want to like fucking start justifying yourself. You don't want to be like, you also don't want to get overly aggressive and be like, none of your fucking business. You just want to kind of call out her behavior. She says, no love. I say, okay, so you can't hang out tomorrow. Aren't you going out with a girl tonight? Whatever love. So here she's making it seem like I'm the asshole. So here I'm going to call her out again, but this might not have been the best text ever. I say, are you always this difficult to make plans with? And she just sends me two middle fingers. So conversation has definitely hit a lull. And I try the same thing I did earlier where I just like her message and she doesn't respond. So here... I do something that I probably wouldn't normally do. I sort of kind of explain myself in a very like roundabout, and like it, this is the least, I don't know, let's just say the least committal way you can explain yourself. I say, why are you being aggressive like that? I'm hanging out with my buddy tonight. 
We made plans tomorrow. And the reason I'm doing this is because she's, again, she's an emotional party girl. So in her mind, she's gonna just make this seem like I'm out there like being the one that's difficult to make plans with and I'm the one that's playing games with her. So I wanna really just completely eliminate that possible idea, that emotion from her mind. So I send this text. She says, sorry, and she sends me a video of herself. So again, I'm not gonna give her validation. Way too many guys would jump on that and be like, oh my God, you're so hot. She's been used to getting, you know, getting by with just her looks, so I'm not gonna let her get away with that with me. So I say, is this your apology gift? Yes, well, I work now, I leave at four. I say, cool, I'm on my way to the gym now. Let's split a bottle of wine later. So this is Sunday again, so I'm trying to see if I can make it happen for the original time. She sends, okay, so again, confirms, and it sends me a video. I say, say nine, okay, she confirms again. And then here I try to like really kind of lock it in more. I send her a picture of my dog with Rhaegar's excited. She says, so cute. And here she tries to call me. Um, I was at the gym, so I can't pick up. And I say, I'm at the gym right now, what's up? She says, oh. And then she double texts me, what do you wanna do? Let's just hang out tomorrow, nothing open. I say, my balcony is open, tequila and wine on tap. So here's the straight to the house invite. She says, my friend's birthday is today. Oh, how fucking convenient. Going to that, we can chill tomorrow. So again, with these party girls, they're gonna go with whatever they're feeling at the moment. So she was in her mind thinking, hmm, yeah, I do have plans with this guy, but it's my friend's birthday. Like, it's my friend, I'm gonna hang out with my friend. So that's kind of how their minds work. They don't think like, well, you know, I actually already promised this and this. I say, okay. Uh, and then I hit her up the next day. I say, yo, sexy, so I'm trying to confirm for that night. She says, hi, and this is still good for tonight. What time? I say, how's 9.30? And here she gives me a real fucking curveball. She says, I'm only looking for paper meats, honestly. Like, you pay me if we fuck. So here she's playing the hooker card. Now, to kind of explain this, there's basically two types of hookers. The first are the pros. These are the chicks who work in casinos, work on the corners. These are the chicks who have pimps or whatever. Those chicks you're not gonna get. You know, you can have the best game ever, best frame control. You're not gonna get them to have sex with you without paying money. So if a girl's in that category, she gets hardcore screened out. But there's also a second type of, let's just say, escort. These are the chicks who are very amateur. They normally they don't even, you know, they have another job, they have something that they're doing, and if a guy's attractive, they'll fuck them for free. But occasionally, you know, they will have sex with a guy for things. Like they're kind of like more like sugar babies. Right, and I just the vibe I'm getting is that she very much fits into that category because if she was a hardcore escort, she wouldn't have really beat around the bush nearly this much. So I can tell that she's an amateur. So here, I'm gonna try to see if I can flip this around. I say, oh, you're an escort? She says, only with hot guys. I say, the ugly ones you fuck for free. So here I'm just breaking down her logic and fucking trolling her. She says, no lull. I say, I don't pay for sex. If that's what you wanted, you should have just said so in the beginning. She just says, okay. And then I say, lame. She says, well, sorry. I say, you only meet people for money. So here I'm just trying to like really push her frame and break it down, but it's not working, unfortunately. She says, is that weird? I'm actually a stripper. Just started, es just started escort, my friend told me about. So there we go. So she's very much an amateur. She's like a strip, more like a stripper, sugar baby. I say, no, I've dated a few strippers. Your approach is weird though. So here I'm gonna get her to basically question. I'm also gonna make it seem like I'm one of the insiders, like, hey, I get it. I'm not like one of your fucking, you know, loser customers. Like I'm actually an insider. That's the vibe I want to portray. She says, how low? It's kind of clear you're an amateur. A pro wouldn't use Tinder for this. So stating the obvious. She says, well, I don't do it a lot. That's why. So again, supporting that theory. Sends so me one of these. And then she says, I don't really like fucking a lot. So people, I'm honestly not escort. So I just do it sometimes when I'm bored kind of thing. I like being with one person. Okay, this is good. Now we're kind of understanding where exactly she's coming from. I say, and you think telling me a few hours before a date that you only want to meet for money is gonna make me want to date you? So yeah, I'm challenging her frame. She says, well, you want to date me? I don't blame you, I'm awesome. And sends me a weird emoji. So again, so she or she's just being like fucking pretending to be the prize, like just being difficult, uh, kind of bragging a little bit, which is a big turnoff. So I say, well, you're definitely losing points right now. One of these, life goes on, blah, 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 and sends me a bunch of Miami, uh, Miami, what a weird meme. So I say typical Miami brat. So yeah, I'm calling her out, but this is just about the limit of how aggressive I'm gonna wanna go. I don't wanna go any more aggressive than this because it's already kind of entering slightly butthurt category. She says, oh, thank you, babe, you're so sweet. I'm not a brat actually, but thanks a lot. So here I try to go in a more sexual direction, see if that sticks. I'd say, spake that attitude right out of you if you quit making excuses. I'm just out here in the world 
doing my thing, and she sends me whatever weird meme. And then uh, I don't say anything. So I deny her the validation, and a few hours later, she texts me, what are you doing, question mark, want to come to Mr. Jones with me? So again, going back to the earlier thing, I'm not going to fucking go to a club with her and her friends. I say, didn't you flake on me an hour ago? Sorry. I say, you can come over. So that's like the best that she's going to get. Like, I'm not going to fucking run around trying to please her, which again is what 99% of the guys that she's talking to are doing. She says, I'm going out. I say, okay. So again, very basic answer. Like, I'm not impressed. I'm not begging. I'm not pleading. I'm not like, oh, please. No, no, no. Just come to my place instead. No, I don't. I have a very take it or leave it type of vibe. She says, to Mr. Jones, come with me. Her grammar is horrible here. I say, sounds boring, I'll pass. Again, not a response that she's often used to getting. She says, a nightclub is boring. Yes, especially that one. I hate all clubs, so honestly, like she could have said any place and I would have hated it. She says, I love the club. And then she says, do you have a bong? I have weed we can smoke. So here she's now trying to make a little bit more of an effort because I've denied her a lot of validation and it's nice going on. She's getting kind of horny. So I say, I probably do somewhere. So I'm kind of giving her a little bit of a leg as well. She says, hey, you still awake? I say, yes. And then she says, come to Mr. Joe. So again, she's trying to get me to go to that fucking club. And again, some guys might be thinking, dude, why don't you just go to the club and you can like, you know, you can hang out there for a little bit and then you can like probably pull her back to your place. Yes, that is possible. But again, my frame is that my time is very valuable, which is the fact. I'm not going to fucking run around clubs trying to get girls. Like, she can either, either like, fucking hang out with me on my terms or we're not going to hang out at all. Like, very take it or leave it, which is a high value attitude to have. I say, come to Mr. Alex. She says, lol. And then she hits me up at 3.48 a.m. when I'm already passed out. Are you waste with J, D, J, whatever. Some nonsense. And then I just don't respond. So, yeah, denying her validation. And then about, I think this was four days later, she texts me out of the blue one night, hey, want to cuddle and fuck? So what happened here? You might be wondering like, whoa, what the fuck? Like this chick was telling you that she only fucks some money. Now she's trying to hit you up. So again, with these party girls, it's going to heavily depend on their mood. If they're horny and, you know, they, whatever, they were denied validation, then they're going to want to fuck. You know, for example, if they just got laid the other night or, you know, they're in a bad mood, then they're going to be in their little escort mode. Now, the trick is that when, you know, when things are not working out, it's not to lose value by getting needy, by getting aggressive, by becoming, you know, just weird, by, you know, begging, by succumbing to her frame. That's what 99% of guys are doing. So if you can just avoid that, you're going to be in like the top 1% of guys in her phone. And then just by being, you know, having a lot of value in her mind, when she's horny, she's very likely to think of you. And then when she, that's the time where you're basically going to get her. So I say, Yes, she says, what's your address? I give her my address. She says, okay, be there soon. I say, what time should I expect you? She says, getting ready now. Should be there 1230, is that okay? I live blah, 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 like 20 minutes away, but there's traffic. I say, uh, yes, see you then. She says, okay, cool. Do you want me to bring weed? Do you smoke? So here, I'm just gonna make this very easy as possible with these late night hookup attempts. Just be very matter-of-factly be straightforward. Don't add unnecessary complexity to the situation. Don't start, you know, being like weird or overly fancy. It's all unnecessary. So I say on special occasions, but bring it might be fun. Okay, cool. Do you have anything to smoke out of? Nope. We need to roll a joint. Okay. How was your day? It's, it's birthday today. A lot of my friends threw me a party. I'm on ecstasy. So that explains the horniness. So now all I want is to choke on a nice dick. I hope your dick is nice. And then, you know, two funny emojis. I say, yes, this is your lucky night. So I'm not going to qualify myself too much. I'm not going to be like, this is the best penis ever. You know, just very simple. I'm going to make you swallow every inch. So here, I just want to keep her horny so she doesn't back out. She says, can I ride you? Of course. Okay, cool. Good thing you're awake. Oh my God, I hate dildo, lol. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I say, this is going to be fun. It will be send me a tease. My pussy's super wet already. And honestly, so some guys might be very tempted to send her dick pics at this point, but it's not necessary. I think that she's very much still on her way over. It's not necessary for me to try to like, you know, fucking get her excited because she's already excited. So I say, get in the car and come on over then. So again, very matter of factly, very dominant. She says, I'm in the car now, leaving my friend's house. I'm almost home. Uh, 12 or 5, then I'll go a little blah, 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 perfect, and yes. So right now we have just mainly logistics. Uh, she says, can we put out music? Well, I say, of course. So yeah, very simple, just being very matter-of-factly. 
Uh, then here's just more logistics. Uh, logistics, she gets confused about where I live, so I have to correct her. You just want to be diligent here, like with the logistics. Sometimes girls will, for example, you know, type in your address slightly wrong and wind up going to the wrong area. And I can, so you just want to be like very, just pay attention to details here. I say, yes, that's me. I'm on my way, be there 1235. Sounds good. I'll call you when I'm downstairs. Almost there, finally meeting you, lol. Is this the right place? And then I meet her outside. Lead her up, and then it was actually very straightforward. Like I lead her, I start. I was fucking around with my computer trying to put on a good song. Like she was like very excited to meet me. She was like, "Oh my god, you have the abs." I was worried you were just gonna be catfishing me. I'm like, "Nope, look just like my pics." Uh, she looks just like her pics. So I'm putting on some shit in the music. I look over, and she just has her shirt off, and she's like, well, "Do you like what you see?" I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" Pick her up, carry her on my bed, and we hook up. So then afterwards, I sent her the post-sex text. That was hot. She says, it was, thank you. I'm kind of lost though. I say, well, where are you? So basically here, it's just, uh, we're just talking about, I'm helping her basically get home with uh, logistics because she's just lost. But anyway, so after that, she was hitting me up a lot. It was really super straightforward for me to, you know, be able to make plans with her again. It was just like, once you basically, with these hot party girls, once you actually, you know, sleep with them, assuming, you know, you're a good lay, you're gonna, again, you, it's gonna, it's gonna, like the second time you go to meet up, while you may have to jump through some hurdles, it's not gonna be nearly as bad because now there's comfort. So now her emotions, which, you know, she mostly relies on, are gonna be telling her yes. So just to quickly reiterate what exactly happened here, right? So she was giving me a lot of shit, you know, for example, the, she bailed several times and the whole hooker shit. The key thing that I did here, the key part of the game was not fucking up. So not getting reactive, uh, not getting butthurt, not getting needy, not falling into her frame, sticking, hanging out to a very strong frame, which kind of put me in the top 1% in her mind of the like, you know, dominant, fun to fuck type of guys, instead of all the other guys who are sweating her, were hitting her up. And after that, it was only a matter of time. Of course, there's a little bit of a luck factor, like, you know, I've had situations just like this that didn't go down, but that's where running volume comes in. All right, hopefully you guys found this video valuable. Show us some love by smashing the like button, hitting the subscribe button, clicking the bell for notifications. Also, check out our forums, where I have this whole layer report with all the screenshots, including a picture or two, on there, so you can check that out as well, forums.playingfire.com. Make sure you check out Instagram, at realplayingfire as well, posting a lot of memes and you know, just text game of the day, a lot of free value there. Thank you guys for watching, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and until next time.